Welcome to New Finance into our inaugural FinTech Night. Christoph, do you want to? I will make a short introduction. Ismail is uh, representing Tisobe. Tisobe is a company from Berlin. They were a part of the um, FinLab in London, organized by Accenture. Ismail, can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, cool. Can, can you hear me okay? We can hear you perfectly. So, uh, um, let me let me just share my screen then. Just for the video, Ismail, I'll just do a quick intro. Mm -hmm. So now we have Ismail from the Open Bank Project. Okay, right. it's all you. It's all do you yours, want me Ismail. to start? Should I start? You can get started now. Everyone can see you now and hear you. All right, very good. You can see the slide as well, right? Yeah, we can. Right. So hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ismail. I'm the COO at Tisobi. Uh, been working on the Open Bank project for the last three years, and uh, my role is really to uh, I'm responsible for uh, the relationship we have with banks, partners, and the developer community. So I'm going to briefly talk about the Open Bank project. So we are an open source API and app store uh, for banks, and hopefully we'll have a sort of interactive session, so you can ask as many questions as you want. Um, just before talking, introducing the Open Bank project, uh, maybe it's worth sharing the vision we have and sort of the, uh, the thesis behind the Open Bank project is that the future of banking is, uh, is platform. So we believe banks would become platforms where instead of, uh, the current model of like one fit, one size fits all type of approach where your bank provides you with one application, one online banking offering. We believe in the future banks would provide you with an ecosystem of services and you as a customers of a bank would be able to cherry pick and download the apps and the services that you need for your um, requirements. So really moving from, as I was saying, this one size fits approach to one size fits all approach to, to, to ecosystem, to platforms. And that is enabled by APIs. So. We believe it's like um, online banking today or mobile banking, like the next wave is going to be API and open, what we call open banking. And Garner is pretty much on, um, going on this, uh, those lines and they predict that 75% of the global banks will actually have APIs in the next couple of years. So, and I think why, why we're going to this platform idea is because somehow, you know, times are changing and I really like these slides, find it extremely funny that 71% of millennials, including myself, would rather go to dentists and not to see their bankers. So, so it's really changing. It's, it's, it's completely changing customer behaviors. Um, we have uh, different devices, different platforms that we expect uh, the banks to, to meet our requirements and our needs on these, on those platforms. At the same time, banks have this very old legacy system, this aging IT systems, and so they can't really keep up with all these changes and all these uh, changing behaviors. And, and also, we have some upcoming regulations that makes it even harder to keep up with the changes, right? So when we think, um, so like current workarounds, like screen scraping, which pretty much enabled all the, the innovations when it comes to banking applications in the recent years, are becoming increasingly prohibited. And we know that in particular in Poland, actually quite recently, the KNF ruled um, and prohibited this idea of screen scraping by banks. Uh, there's pretty much the same going on in the UK and in the US. Um, lots of yeah, pressure to, to prohibit screen scraping. And, you know, basically screen scraping is this idea of you as a, as a customer, you give your credential, your password and login. Uh, of your bank account to, to third party and that third party would use it to uh, log in into your, uh, into your bank account via boat and that boat would, you know, sort of throw, give back data to, to third party application. So it's extremely insecure process, uh, which, um, yeah, which, uh, which gives access to your password to third party. So we felt there is, you know, there is something to be done, something different to, to be done, which is more secure and which actually would enable and, uh, unlock this potential of innovation that is, uh, the, that is behind the retail bank, basically. And we feel the solution to meet these challenges. So tomorrow's bank needs to be more open. Tomorrow's bank to meet these challenges have to 
to have an open infrastructure where they can easily plug with third party uh, solutions. Uh, they need to develop an ecosystem so of developers, so solution providers, people actually building apps uh, against this infrastructure. And then they need to have a sort of app store or a uh, developer portal where this innovation and this solution would be shared with the, with the customers of the bank. And that's exactly what we've been building with the open bank project. So through the three last years, um, building this API infrastructure, which enable banks basically to easily plug a uh, third party application easily and in a secure manner. Uh, so no more sharing of credentials uh, to easily plug those third party applications and to share them with their customers. So customers can cherry pick and download the apps they want. Um, and this is good for everyone, right? So it's good for the banks because it provides them with, it enables them to pro to, to provide like a wider offering of, um, of apps to their customers. Um, gives them faster time to market when it comes to deploying new apps and it gives an enormous cost saving when it comes to data integration. Um, it's also good for developers. So developers have now an easy way to uh, tap into this transaction data, banking transaction and to, to build their, their innovative services. And then by the end of the day, it's good for the customers because the customers enjoy a larger uh, offering more apps and, and, and better quality and better security, basically. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, what the Open Bank project is. So it's really about building an open standard for banks, uh, an open standard and an API um, interface, an API stack for banks to be able to provide that ecosystem idea, that platform idea for, for banks to be able to work together with developers, with third party developers in order to push um, apps to their customers through through an app store. And then what the Open Bank project is about as well is, and I think this is a key um, idea, is this community of developers. And so building a community of developers behind the API that would come up with new innovation, that would come up with new uh, applications. So briefly, the way it works, it's very simple. So we have this API stack that we plug at the um, on the, the bank legacy system. And here there is some custom uh, connectors to be built uh, for each bank. And then each bank has its own instance of the API. So the banks actually operates, fully operates this API stack and in, is in control of this API stack. And then this API stack offers uh, a public interface, which is RESTful, which is extremely developer friendly and which is standard. Uh, it's also very, it's, uh, it's you know, there's bank level security that we, that we provide. We use OAuth. So that is, um, that is our solution to screen scraping. So with the open bank project, you no longer give your credentials. You, we use delegation of authentication. So basically the, the authentic authentication always happened between the bank and the customers. The third party developers, the apps never sees the, uh, the credential of the end customer. So just to give you, make it more concrete, just some ideas of, of, app, of apps. So Momentum and Christoph is here in the room. Um, it's been one of the, the first apps to connect to the API actually. Uh, so Momentum is a business analytics software, gives you cash and revenue forecasting and, and all that by anal analyzing your transaction history for small businesses. Uh, Mo Money Garden, which is on the right, is a PFM sort of budgeting app. So it gives you nice pie charts. Um, summarizing all your, uh, your finances, basically. We have, yeah, a bunch of other use cases, about 20 apps, um, uh, right now. So ranges from, we have an app for visually impaired people, for instance. So it's a mobile app. You take the mobile app. You can't see your balance. So you just take the mobile app. You say, Hey, what's my balance? And it speaks to you the balance. Uh, we, we even have an, an, like an app we call, uh, singing banks. So it takes a gimmick app takes your transaction data and play music out of it. Sort of funny, funny ways. Really, there is lots of innovation to be, uh, to be done. And this is like critically, this is done by the developers, by those third party developers. And as I was saying, that's really a key asset of the open bank project. We spend lots of time building this community of developers, training them. And, you know, we do hackathons a lot. The next hackathon we're doing is in Paris actually next week. And, and it's, for us, it's very important to meet with the developers and to enable them to come up with those innovations and to easily use the, the, the Open Bank Project API. 
Uh, we also have uh, banks engaged and banks on board. So we have few proof of concepts running with tier one banks, notably in the UK. Um, we, we do work with Temenos, which is one of the largest core banking uh, vendors out there. So they have 700 bank customers. And uh, we're going live with two banks in Nigeria, actually. So deploying live uh, with, with two banks. And also we have a fairly big network of, of partners in different countries. So Nigeria, Singapore, US, but also in Poland uh, with, with Christoph. So, and just to give you an example of what we do with banks. So uh, the latest use case we have is with Rabobank, one of the largest, second largest retail bank in the Netherlands. So in six weeks, in just about six weeks, we deployed our API. We organized a hackathon for them. So brought together 65 developers and in just two days, they built 15 hacks, 15 different applications. So lots of innovation. And I think it was, yeah, it was a unique thing. We were able to just in sort of record time where we were able to, um, garner people's attention, get people together and get them to actually innovate in just two days and build very cool stuff, actually. Um, so, so yeah, so that's one thing. So basically, usually the, the sort of process we have for deploying the open bank project API to banks is uh, we start with a proof of concept just to make sure the technology fits and, and, and the security is all right and, and all that. So the proof of concept use only test data, use sandbox. And then we optionally, we organize a hackathon. That's like where we put the, the, the API out there and we get developers together. They test it, they build stuff, cool stuff uh, on the top of it. And we just announced uh, our next bank. Basically, we're going to do proof of concept and hackathon with Ulster Bank, fairly large bank in Ireland. So we're doing two hackathons with them actually. And and so after the hackathon phase, we, we move to a pilot phase where now we use like live data from the bank with a restricted number of users and then a public rollout with, with pretty much all the users. And it is to discretion, it, it is for the bank to decide what sort of API uh, it, it wants basically. So the open bank project, um, fits with a sort of internal only use case of so internal developers, uh, the, the bank teams uh, use it, just just those teams or partners only. So you only have a selected number of partners that you want to use it with, or you actually want to go public and use it with uh, with pretty much everyone. So we we do have some we do have success with the two first use cases. I think uh, an API for uh, for for every for any third party developer is something that is coming probably not you know now but is coming and and that's totally the future that's where we're heading basically um so that's pretty much what i wanted to say today actually so i really want to have a, a interactive session with you guys so if you do have questions i'd be happy to yeah to answer that and and then you can also talk to afterwards you can talk with christoph and i think he'd be happy to help you as well with more details but is there questions now Ismail, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so do we have any questions for Ismail? Oh, we do. Okay. Hi. So, yeah, you're saying that the API is open, but there is also an app store. So, is it a prerequisite to have your app inside the app store to be able to use the API or? Can I just use the API from any right. server on the internet? Yeah, sure. No, it's so. So I think there are two questions here. To which extent is uh, the API open source? Well, it's it's fully open source, if that makes sense. So it's uh, under an AGPL license, and pretty much every line of code we write is actually open source. We put it there is a GitHub project. You find there every line of code we write. So there is no private repository or anything like that. Uh, so that's for the first thing. The second thing is. You actually, you don't have to put it on our app store or, or anything like that. So you can just take the API, plug it to your uh, application and, you know, use it or deploy it at your site. You don't even have to be a bank, right? So you can, if you are a P2P solution or, or, you know, if you basically deal with transaction data, you can take the API and install it on our, uh, on your site, basically. Just to make sure. The bank has to integrate with the open bank API, right? It's not available for yes. all banks. So yeah. what banks have already integrated with open API? 
Right. So yeah, so every bank has to deploy the open bank project and integrate with the open bank project. And then that bank would operate its own instance of the open bank project API. Uh, we have, uh, as I was saying in the presentation, so, so far we have two banks who are, which are, so in Germany, we cover pretty much, so we're based in Berlin, by the way. Um, and in Germany, we pro cover pretty much all the banks, like about 2000 banks here in Germany. Uh, so that's pretty much all of them. And then outside Germany, so we have two banks in Nigeria and, um, and other countries like the UK, we have proof of concept. So it's not like, it's not yet live, basically. Uh, in Germany, there is a big standard. So I suppose you use th that to integrate. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We connect to uh, HBCI. Okay. Thank you. What is the typical timeline of the implementation? How much it takes for the bank and you to implement the API? It's a three months, six months, one year, two years. So, so the proof of concept is basically fairly, fairly quick, like six to eight weeks. Uh, and then the, the sort of full integration with live data that really depends on, uh, it's like on a per, a per bank basis, basically. It's really case by case. So some of the banks provide, um, some sort of SOAP interfaces, internal web services that we connect to. That is, that's fast. Um, some others do not, like we have, you have to connect to mainframe or something like that. So that's, that's a bit more complicated. But yeah, usually so far it's like two months, two months and a half process. Yeah. Okay. So basically in a typical bank, we've got a lot of systems and every system has got its vendor and vendors are usually not pretty much open for your idea, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think it is really changing. So when we started, when we start talking to, to banks 2011, they were, you know, blank staring at us, right? Like what's an API? What's this open? Like just the, the sort of combination of open with bank or the word open with the word bank was completely, you know, sort of crazy thing. Uh, but I think today it, it completely changed it and we really feel it cross, you know, cross the word. So now you pick any bank you, you want, any pick, big bank you want in any country and uh, in Europe and in the US, they will have a team working on, on this API topic. So there is a lot, lot more at least interest in this topic to understand what an API is, you know, what, what value it could provide to a bank. So I think there is more and more, and there is lots of people. So we do lots of evangelization, but there's also Garner recently launched a, an annual report about this open banking idea. So, uh, and some banks actually, so BBVA, for instance, launched an app competition. They provided their own API. And I think in just two months, they had 7 million API calls. So, yeah, so banks sort of start feeling that something is changing, that there is something behind that. They, they, I think, you know, they, yeah, they're not into sort of buying, um, or, you know, they don't, they, they're not crazy about it yet. But I think there's definitely an interest in learning more about it. Yeah, but and, just, and just similarly in Poland, it's also happening in Poland. Yeah, Ismail, just to clarify the question, because uh, the, the the issue that was mentioned here is uh, what is the what is the position of the vendors? You know, because there are core systems, there are big names providing electronic banking systems, and uh, are they open? You know, for integrating with your API, you have a successful story with the Temenos, so maybe that's a good case study for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think core banking is one of our, um, big sort of, uh, in distribution channels, um, if you can say, say that. And, uh, so we, we working also with SAP, for instance, so I think that's, that's really key for, you know, for getting more banks, but, but also really banks are, are open, are, you know, becoming increasingly open to that idea. Okay, one more question. How do you plan to scale up uh, when the, when your market will be growing? How is it different? Uh, how this API is different from the cloud uh, solutions? Or is it the same? Um, can you say it again? Sorry, I, I heard cloud solution. Oh, it was a question about the scalability and the way how you would like to scale your business and how much close is to the cloud cloud delivery platforms. Right. So it, it actually could be deployed both on premise or on premise or on the cloud, right? So it's, it's to the discretion of the bank. If the banks want it on premise, I think most of the banks now are really into this on premise uh, idea. So, you know, it's 
feel free. That's, that's, we're happy with that as well. But then if later they want to move it to the cloud, if they want to pull resources, you know, so you have a cloud instance and behind it, few banks using the same API, I think that's also something, you know, that could be done. But I think, you know, back to the, to, to your point of are the banks open? I think, yeah, they're open to this on-premise uh, type of idea. Uh, what kind of uh, innovation are the banks looking uh, looking for? What kind of data they want to make available uh, to developers to, to right. build, build something? I think it's a very interesting question. I think that's a big debate. That's really where they are sort of struggling with and where we provide some sort of value. So in, instead of uh, you know spending months or maybe years just trying to define what is it that they want to share and what the semantic for that should be, right? Like, how should we call the, the accounts or whatever? Um, I think by using the Open Bank project, they already have some sort of, you know, standard uh, approach to that and uh, uh, which lots of developers have been you know, sort of agreeing on. Um, so I think that's one way, uh, one, one thing that we actually bring to the table. But then to, to answer also your question, I think the uh, what we what we're see, seeing is um, they they still struggle really struggle lots of banks struggle with opening transaction data. Um, I think the the easiest way for them is actually to open some to use an API to open some data that is already available that they want to to be available. So for instance, uh, your where is your bank's uh, brand where is the branch located, right? So if you have an API that provides you with uh, the location of the branch, people can take that and add them to their, you know, whatever Yelp or other uh, applications. And this is like sort of some sort of public, you know, semi-public information. It's not sensitive. So I think most of banks are happy with that use case. Um, yeah, more difficult one is transaction. Payment is also yet another beast. Uh, but I think what is changing is uh, this um, regulation that is coming. So thinking of PSD2 in, in the EU in particular, where you know banks are explicitly asked to um, open their infrastructure to to third party like op open their account information transaction data and payment infrastructure to third parties and uh if i can add two things from my point of view there there are few major business benefits for the bank for opening the data first lowering the risk so if we can score uh, your business or your in your you know your individual position better because we have better understanding of your cash position not only in the bank we are but also in other banks so we can give you better offer okay so that's one thing the second is uh you know all those pfms which are not working well you know because the problem is they are they are very limited in terms of the one bank that are just supporting and uh, and uh, the last thing which is also very important to uh, to provide the data that can be used because there is a huge topic about the big data in banking, but we believe that the banks are not sometimes are not dealing really well with the small data even, you know. I can give you an example that there is a, my, you know, relationship manager calling me every month saying, I have a very good credit option for you. But I said, I don't need credit option. If you will take a while taking a look, taking a look at my account, for example, you will see that maybe I would like to invest or something, you know. So the big data is one topic, but start with the small data first, okay? And uh, external developers can really help with that, okay? Yeah. Another clear, clear use case we see with the Open Bank project is actually accounting, right? So we always use some sort of accounting, online accounting software, like the Zero or something. And wouldn't it be great if you, you could just, you know, make it automatic, that, that sort of bank reconciliation and, and all that? So that's what, you know, an API, banking API would be able to offer. Okay, Ismail, we're going to call it there. Thank you very much for coming in for Berlin and for taking the time to speak to us. Thank it you was much. a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cheerio. Bye.